This is the JTV Caribbean News. I am Sean Rose. The Barbados government says it wants a speedy conclusion for an air service agreement with China as it hopes to lure visitors and investors from that Asian country. A government statement providing details of a meeting between the island's ambassador designated to the People's Republic of China, Dr. Charleston Brathwaite, quoted Prime Minister Stewart as saying that Barbados was in the development phase of its relationship with China and it was now necessary to familiarize the Chinese with Barbados in an effort to attract Chinese tourists and business people to these shores. Stewart, who acknowledged that the local economy had become structurally integrated into the economies of the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada, insisted that there was a need to look into new directions and identified China and Latin America as two of the new paths to be followed. Brathwaite, who this month took up his appointment in Beijing, noted that tourism, trade, and business were key areas of interest, adding that 83 million Chinese tourists traveled annually, spending an estimated 102 billion U.S. dollars. St. Lucians will be paying less for electricity as a result of a 2.6 cent reduction in the tariff for 2013. The country's sole provider, the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited, announced that the basic tariff for electricity has been reduced, starting with bills for February and continuing the remainder of the year. St. Lucia Electricity Services Manager Trevor Luizzi explained that the basic tariff is what their customers pay per unit of electricity without the fuel surcharge. It is reviewed in January of every year in accordance with the Electricity Supply Act and reflects the average price of fuel for the preceding 12 months. Louise said that the reduction in the basic tariff is a result of the average price of fuel for 2013 being lower than the previous average price in 2012. The reductions are largely due to a fuel price hedging program which the St. Lucia Electricity Services has had in place for the past five years, designed to reduce large fluctuations in the fuel surcharge. The Irish-based telecommunications company Digicel has acquired the locally owned Sat Telecom in Dominica. According to Antigua Observer, neither Digicel, a major telecommunications company operating in the Caribbean, nor Sat Telecom has issued any statement on the purchase. But local media reports said that the deal had been approved by the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority and the National Telecommunication Regulatory Commission. Local employees have already been informed of the purchase. Sat Telecoms, established in July 1999, was awarded a license in cable television and broadcasting, and in 2003, it received a fixed public telecommunications network license, fixed and wireless internet license, allowing it to compete on Dominica's market. But the company has had economic problems. St. Vincent and the Grenadines opposition leader Arnim Eustace has accused CARICOM of hypocrisy in its response to the political situations in St. Kitts and Nevis and Venezuela. CARICOM, which is chaired by Vincentian Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez, issued a statement on Tuesday calling for respect for the democratically elected government of Venezuela. A number of protesters, many of them students, have died as large protests have broken out in Venezuela against the Nicolas Maduro government's handling of the country's affairs. Gonzalez said on Tuesday that his government supports the Maduro administration and spoke against what he described as attempts to destabilize a government which has been duly elected. However, speaking at a press conference on Wednesday, Eustace accused CARICOM of being hypocritical. Here is more in this excerpt, courtesy of Eyewitness News, SVG.com. What I find most disheartening is the deafening silence of other CARICOM governments who appear to wish that this situation in St. Kitts did not exist. The CARICOM chairman, Prime Minister Gonsalves, and his colleagues should hang their heads in shame for condoning this unacceptable state of affairs. CARICOM ignores the situation in St. Kitts, but makes a formal statement in support of Maduro in Venezuela, indicating, and I want to quote CARICOM in this regard, that no democratic society can reasonably pursue 
disorder or any unwanted subversion of democratic institutions. Any unwanted subversion of democratic institution. You say in Kitts Parliament is a democratic institution. Is this not what is taking place in Kitts Kids now? What hypocrisy. Six of the 11 MPs in St. Kitts and Denevis say they no longer support Douglas as Prime Minister. The Caribbean Court of Justice held its first ever meeting in Guyana. The full bench of the CCJ heard three cases over three days beginning February 17. All of the cases originated in Guyana. The cases were heard at the Guyana International Conference Center. The panel includes CCJ President Sir Charles Dennis Byron and Justices Winston Anderson, Adrian Saunders, Jacob Witt and David Hayton. This is the third time the CCJ has held an itinerant sitting following similar sittings in Barbados and Jamaica. The court views these itinerant sittings as important to ensuring that it is accessible to the people of the Caribbean community which it serves, the court said in a release. Guyana, Belize and Barbados are the only Caribbean community CARICOM countries that regard the CCJ as their final court. Dominica has recently signaled that it intends to accede to the court, while Trinidad announced last year it would send criminal but not civil appeals to the CCJ. The Judicial Committee of the UK-based Privy Council remains the final court of appeal for the majority of the Commonwealth Caribbean. The CCJ is based in Port of Spain, Trinidad. For the GTV Caribbean News, Sean Rose. Coming up next on JTV News. New start dates for biowater, water production and the sewage collection system revealed in a Standing Finance Committee report and the budget debate. The public can also seek certification in courses offered at the Technical and Vocational Training Institute through evening classes. Health Minister Ronnie Skelton says not enough Virgin Islanders are pursuing careers in the health sector and those who benefit from training abroad have not returned to serve in the BVI. And a national targeted intervention dubbed MALE will focus on providing a positive environment for young males.